Hi everyone, today I'm going to be working on Eagle Woods Arts or EWA's globe model. Now they have a different globe model and so there's two models in total. But this one is the colored version where you're going to have the blue ocean while the other um, globe model is just going to be uh, shades of brown. And so it should be the identical model to my knowledge and this is just the colored version. So. The model comes with an instructional manual and as you can see here it uh, shows you every single step of the way and it's uh, actually depicted all in illustrations so it's actually pretty uh, easy to follow through with and it's actually a pretty good model to work with. Uh, the only thing I would say that this model is relatively large and so you want to make sure you have enough table space because um, I actually started running out of room at, on my uh, model desk. So uh, just be aware uh, of the size of this model and I'm actually pulling my camera further up than I would normally do for my model videos just because the scale of the model is so large that it's trying to hard, it's really hard to try to get, capture everything. Just a fair warning, some of the sheets were actually um, glued together because I guess it's the way the paint dried or my guess is actually the paint kind of uh, melted and then kind of dried up again while it was probably transported or stored or something. So there are little portions where um, the paint did chip off. Luckily it did not chip off on any of the parts that I'm actually using and it just only chipped off on the, the frame that holds all the pieces together. A little tip is to push out the pieces of wood from the bottom side and not from the top side up. This actually prevents uh, splitting or fraying on the actual part itself that you're pushing out as uh, if you push it in towards the sheet what happens a lot of times is that a lot a little piece or little chip might happen on the piece itself because it sometimes keeps the part of the wood on the sheet instead so if you're pushing it from the bottom side um, you're actually preventing it from actually destroying the face side After trying many different methods for these toothpicks, which I really hate for any of these wood models just because my fingers hurt at the end of the day because there's just so many toothpicks to go after. Um, so uh, what I started just doing was using kind of like a snipper. Um, I would actually just cut it in half to make it kind of like a spear and I'll just push it through. And once it's all the way on the uh, th push through, then I'll just use the snipper again to kind of uh, cut off the part that I don't need. And then I'll run through with X-Acto knife just to clean it up so it becomes a flush finish and you don't have any uh, splinters or any pieces sticking out. So there's not really much to talk about for this model. It is actually very repetitive. And I did want to just talk about a few of the steps. So this uh, globe um, is actually very interesting because of course there's a part where the globe would actually spin on its axis. But there's actually a hidden compartment. So the base actually have these two dials that you're supposed to rotate to uncover a little opening in the box. And then you're going to have a latch to, uh, to um, click on. And when you do, part of the compartment comes out uh, from the base for you to have a hidden uh, kind of chest to store stuff. So um, right now, what I'm building is the actual compartment. And so it's going to mimic the front. So the front piece I'm putting on right now is actually going to be identical to all the other pieces that's going to be on part of the base. So once this compartment is pushed in, um, you will not notice that it's a separate compartment. After you build the compartment, the base is relatively straightforward. You're just really sl slapping on the, the sides and the top and bottom of the base. Um, and then once you get to the globe, it is pretty repetitive um, in the sense that it's all pretty much the same pieces that you're putting together. And so you're going to be doing strips of the globe at a time. And the only thing is that you're going to be uh, finding the pieces of the countries or continents that you're going to be kind of uh, attaching to those faces. So that, other than that, it's a very, very repetitive step. So it's actually a pretty good project for a lot of beginner uh, wood modelers.
As I mentioned earlier, this is very repetitive, and what I'm creating right now is actually all the uh, the faces of the base on the side. And um, as you saw, I flipped one of the pieces over, and this was kind of confusing for me at first, just because um, that piece was actually painted blue. But I think what they just did was it was easier for them to manufacture by just coloring the whole sheet, and what you just use is the back side of that one piece so that you just have your um, same looking base piece. I originally misjudged this model by thinking that these gears were going to be meant to be able to rotate the globe but what this actually just does is um, it, it, it actually uh, rotates the face of the base plate um, so that it will actually rotate around the, uh, the center and it will actually open up a hidden compartment for you to uh, reach into. So um, the gears here, you're going to be making two sets com uh, total that are going to be the west and the east knob and that's, those are going to be placed on both sides of the globe um, for you to be able to kind of rotate to kind of uh, rotate the plate.
so as you're seeing here, um, I'm, I'm actually going to be putting on the faceplate of the base and you're going to see uh, multiple pieces where I'm actually aligning the hole and this is the hole that I was talking about where uh, when you start rotating the base with the dials, you're going to be um, kind of exposing this hole for your finger to reach into that lever to release the compartment lock so that the compartment kind of, kind of popped out. And so um, this dial um, piece right now that looks like a compass is what's actually going to be uh, kind of the front top and then the mid layer is the part that's actually going to be rotating around that's going to be exposing this hidden compartment uh, opening. I had to zoom my camera out because as you see the top of that globe um, axis is actually really close to the camera even with my camera being all the way up there and um, this is just because of the scale of the globe this is a massive globe and I really love the scale of this model for this reason because um, it would be really easy just to do a miniature globe uh, for EWA but the fact that they made it a kind of this massive globe I just think that it really shows the details really well of the model. So to understand how this kind of ax globe axis is kind of being hold held into place you're putting uh, one piece that's going to be wedged on the bottom side and then you're going to slide through the second piece and then you're going to take that piece and kind of push it up so that it's kind of locked in on the top and then the first piece is locked on the bottom and then you're actually going to get a wedge piece that's going to be like a sliver wood piece and you're going to fit it through the two pieces so that it kind of compresses everything and so that um, it, nothing would budge so what you need to do is put the wax on it because if you don't put the wax on this wedge piece it's really hard to fit through because it's going to be a very tight squeeze. The wax actually reduces the friction so that it's actually uh, a lot easier to slide that piece in between and actually hold everything in place. So this is kind of where the repetition starts and so we're going to be starting off with the frame of the globe and the frame of the globe would not be seen as the uh, we're going to be adding the pieces um, that are the faces that are going to be attached to these frames and so you're actually not going to be exposing this frame at all but you're going to be starting off with half of the spear um, and then you're going to be joining it with the other side so it's actually pretty simple to do. Um, I was kind of worried that things are not going to be hold, held in place until the final piece is set in but um, the wedges are pretty nicely uh, made so that it actually doesn't move around too much so as you can see it's not too bad uh, putting it together so um, you know it is very repetitive and this is the part where you put the two globes together or the two semispheres together and this part's a little bit uh, tricky just because you have to hold it while you wedge in the piece to hold it in place um, so that was kind of tricky just because you want to make sure that they're aligned properly before you wedge the pieces in So um, I actually cut out quite a bit of this video but this is raw, it took me a while 
to fit in and one thing I didn't do was put wax on that rod which I kind of wish I did but um, it actually took a while for me to get the rods through the small hole and I, part of it is because they wanted to make sure that um, it's a very tight fit so it doesn't rotate around this rod so it needs to be rigid and staying in one place along the, the globe itself. I'm using a ruler to measure out how much I need to have it stick out on the bottom side and the manual will actually specify uh, how many centimeters you need um, room so that it can actually fit into the axis. Although it's very repetitive, I actually found this uh, part of the build very relaxing uh, just because it is kind of uh, repetitive but it's kind of fun to also trying to solve it like a puzzle. So as I'm building, I'm trying to figure out, okay, so you know, which country is this and which uh, part of the country would this be? You know, is this Florida, you know? And so it's actually kind of fun to kind of uh, do this. It was actually very therapeutic in a sense because of the repetition, but with enough variety for you to start thinking and try to solve the globe puzzle of where am I, where is this? And um, overall, this was just a really fun build to have. I felt really uncomfortable doing this part a little bit just because once those two axis pieces are held in place, you're supposed to wedge this piece in between and I was actually really afraid of the wood uh, splitting or cracking, but luckily it didn't. Uh, but I still feel really uncomfortable about the, this step in general of just building and attaching the globe to the axis.
and once it's complete I'm gonna be adding back this hidden compartment and you're gonna see me push it in and I'm gonna show you how this uh, compartment works so here is the final product which is the globe and as you can see it can spin on along the axis and you're going to see every country and you're going to kind of see the major uh, cities kind of on this globe usually the capitals of each country and then um, what I'm going to show you now is how to actually access that uh, compartment so I'm actually using the two dials to kind of rotate the front plate or the, the top plate of the base and there's gonna be a little latch there inside that uh, hidden compartment hole and once you uh, click on it or once you pull on it with your finger it actually loosens the lock so that you can actually pull out the compartment itself and then once you put the compartment back in or when you're comp putting the compartment back in you want to make sure to hold on to the lever so that it can actually lock back in and release the lever to lock it in place and then you can rotate uh, the handles again just to kind of uh, close it back up as I mentioned, I really enjoyed building this model and I hope you build this model or try it out and I'm pretty sure you're going to have the same uh, good time as I did. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed watching this video, please hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell or the notification if you want to get notified when I make new videos and I upload them.